um, in general medicine and general surgery. So one of the very important questions what have been very frequently asked, whether it be in the medicine or in the surgery, it is about the myos and mydriasis. So today's video I will be mainly focusing upon as to what is this meiosis and what is mydriasis. And in this video I will also tell you about the what are the causes, what can lead to the process of meiosis and mydriasis. So before getting into the detailed discussion, I would like to draw your attention that this meiosis and mydriasis it is a phenomena what is being strictly related to the size of the pupil now pupil as you all might be very well aware that this pupil it is a small circular black dot in the center of your eye and it, this it is this, this small black dot which is responsible for the entry of light into the eye now there are certain conditions of illumination that the pupil contracts and the pupil dilates. So whenever there is a very proper, very bright light, suddenly there occurs the pupils, they, they, they contract, they constrict because the, so there is, has to be a certain minimal amount of light that needs to enter into the eyes. So in a very bright and illuminated areas, it is mostly seen that the pupils mostly constrict. Now, whereas in cases of very poor illumination, where, where there is a very dull illumination or in extreme darkness when certain, suddenly the electricity, the light goes off at night. So what happens is in order for the passage of more entry of light into the eye, the pupils are going to dilate. So the basic role of the function and the role and the function of pupil is that it permits the entry of light into the eye by certain muscles are there now this since uh, pupil is a small uh, black circular dot which is going to permit the entry of the light into the eye and it is surrounded by the colored portion of the eye so as in you can see in the eye you can find that in the center there is a small uh, black circular dot and uh, around it it is being surrounded by the colored portion so this colored portion of the eye it is called as the iris and this iris it is this iris which is going to contain certain constrictor and certain sphinx uh, certain constrictor and certain dilator muscles what are going to contract and relax in order for the altering the dimension the size of the pupil so as you can see in a normal pupil in a normal eye this figure what i have drawn over here you can see that this is the picture where in the center it is the black circular dot that is the pupil which is going to permit the entry of light into the eye and it is surrounded by just it is surrounded by uh, muscles which are called as the radial muscles. So these since these muscles, it is surrounded by certain circular muscles. So just outside the pupil, there are certain circular muscles. And apart from them, outside on the periphery, these are the radial muscles. So these are the circular muscles what I have drawn, which is surrounding the pupil. And if these are the radial muscles. Now, whenever there is an appropriate uh, illumination is there the normal size of the pupil it varies between 3 to 4 mm in normal moderate illumination when proper moderate lightning is there it is mostly seen that the size of the pupil is somewhat round about 3 to 4 uh, nano uh, 3 to 4 millimeters now since the size of the pupil is 3 to 4 millimeters in a normal illumination, but whenever there is going to be an excess of illumination or under the influence of certain drugs, certain diseases, certain chemicals, the size of the pupils constrict. And this constriction of the pupil under the influence of certain drugs, certain chemicals, certain disorders, certain diseases, as well as in very bright light, the size of the pupil is going to constrict and it can even reduce to 1 to 2 millimeters. So when the size of the pupil is going to reduce to 1 to 2 millimeters, it is the phenomena is called as the meiosis. And in the process of meiosis, as you can see in the diagram, the process of meiosis, it is also called as the pinpoint pupil because the pupil is going to assume thus the size of a pinpoint and which is called as the meiosis and in this condition what is going to happen is that the, um, the iris what is going to contain the dilator and the uh, sphincter pupilli, sphin uh, uh, sphincter muscles 
what is going to happen is that is the constrictor muscles or the circular muscles they are going to contract so whenever there is a very bright illumination or under the influence of certain drugs chemicals what is going to happen is the circular muscles of the pupil are going to contract they are going to contract and that was ultimately going to lessen down or decrease the size of the pupil thereby permitting in thereby permitting only the required amount of light to enter into the eye so this these are the circular muscles what are going to constrict in the process of meiosis where the pupil assumes the size of a pinpoint it is also called as the pinpoint pupil whereas in case of dilation when we talk of mydriasis so mydriasis means where there is an inadequate um, illumination or where the light amount of light is not proper or you must have observed that all of a sudden when at night the electricity electricity is going goes off so at that condition since there is no light around the eyes the pupils they are going to enlarge for permitting more whatever light is available in the surroundings for the entry of that light the pupils are going to enlarge so in the condition of mydriasis when there is very poor illumination or there is no illumination the pupils suddenly they start enlarging due to the contraction or the constriction of the radial muscles so it is the radial muscles what are going to constrict and that is ultimately going to cause the enlargement of the size of the pupil the pupils are going to enlarge so these are the two basic phenomena that is the meiosis and the mydriasis meiosis students you can very easily remember if you are uh, having any difficulty to remember this you can just remember meiosis is a small word as compared to mydriasis so meiosis it is a small word it is having lesser number of alphabets it is refers to a small pupil whereas mydriasis it is a large word it is having more number of alphabets it's a longer spelling is there for it so it is a larger pupil so this is the short trick as to how we can very easily remember that my meiosis since it is a small word containing lesser alphabets it refers to a smaller pupil whereas mydriasis it containing a large number of words but more number of words as compared to meiosis so it is have it indicates a larger pupil now looking at the causes so this video i'll be mainly talking of what are the causes because in certain certain exams you are supposed to write about enumerate the causes of meiosis so firstly the first cause of meiosis can be looked upon as that the effect of the local meiotic drugs so there are certain meiotic drugs which is going to cause these uh meiosis and these are also called as the parasympathomimetic drugs do remember that para this process of meiosis it is also called as the it is a phenomena of parasympathetic activity means when the body is relaxed when the body is not tensed it is not in a state of sympathy though so it is a state of pleasure so during the pleasure states the pupil on a relaxed state on a normal state when the body is relaxed since it is a parasympathetic stage so during this condition the process of meiosis is there and suddenly when there is a danger when a person is frightened when any kind of a danger is there so that initiates the that triggers the body's sympathetic response and during this sympathetic response against the pupils are going to dilate for the entry of more light on it's a not natural process that during the sympathetic response the pupils are going to dilate so firstly the most um, most important cause of meiosis it is the effect of the local sympathomimetic drugs there are certain drugs what are resembling the normal parasympathetic activity or they are resembling the parasympathetic system functioning so there there are certain effects of the local meiotic drugs or the parasympatheto mimetic drugs which are going to cause meiosis moving on to the next cause that is the effect of the systemic morphine now morphine it's a very uh, common um, most common drugs what is uh, being more uh, used as a drug abuse as uh, as a drug abuse so in uh, on administration of morphine for the various surgical procedures where it is administered so in under such conditions again the pupil gets relaxed the pupil size is diminished under the systemic effect of the morphine moving on to the next condition that is third that is the iridocyclitis now iridocyclitis it is a condition where the inflammation of the iris is there so the iris is somewhat inflamed the iris is narrow 
irregular or the pupil becomes non-reactive. The third can the, the third cause is the iridocyclitis, where the inflammation of the iris is going to take place. Moving on to the fourth condition, which is called as the Horner syndrome. So Horner syndrome, it is you can very easily think of that it's a certain syndrome where a disrupted nerve pathway on one side of the brain to the face and the eye is there. So during Horner syndrome, it is a disruptive nerve pathway from one side of the face and the eye is involved so during this condition also the process of meiosis can be seen moving on to the next uh, cause that is the head injury so whenever there is an uh, in most of the cases of so in some instances of head injury or in cases of pontine hemorrhages so in cases of pontine hemorrhages it is mostly seen that since the ocular motor nerve or the third cranial nerve what is going to get supplied to, is going to supply the muscles or the nerves what are being supplied what are supplying to the eye they are getting damaged so during this condition during the conditions of head injury or in cases of pontine hemorrhage the process of meiosis can be seen now whereas in next condition is the senile rigid biotic pupil now during mold age it is mostly seen that as the person ages as the persons grow old it is mostly seen that the pupils tend to grow smaller and it is basically basically a defect it is due to the weakness of the iris dilator muscles so the iris dilator muscles during old age they are going to get weakened and this weakening of the iris dilator muscles that causes meiosis in old age now moving on to the next important cause that is the due to this effect of strong light obviously the pupil is the site which permits which regulates the amount of the light what is going what is getting entry into the eye so during very strong light the size of the pupil diminishes it is one of the cause of meiosis whereas third last but not the least that is during sleep obviously steep sleep it is a para, um, parasympathetic process where the body is in pleasure it is fully relaxed so during sleep the pupil is pinpoint whereas in conditions in certain bacterial diseases such as the Lyme disease the neurocephalus sometimes the syphilis progresses to the neurological state it progresses to the brain it progresses it involves the nerves so in the late stages when the nerve involvement is there in syphilis this is the neurocephalus where the nerve involvement is there and in such conditions the process of meiosis can be seen moving on to the next but uh, last in such a such certain rare diseases such as in multiple sclerosis also this meiosis can be seen now moving on to the causes of mitriasis so when talking of the causes of mitriasis first most important condition it is the optic atrophy now in conditions of optic atrophy what is seen it refers to the death of the retinal cell ganglion so in the conditions of optic atrophy the retinal cell ex exons what are there those ganglions are that comprise the optic nerve the optic atrophy is there in conditions of absolute glaucoma where the there is total blindness in conditions of an uh, absolute glaucoma an eye that has lost all vision and there is uncontrolled pressure that is the intraocular pressure is increased there is uncontrolled pressure and that leads to absolute glaucoma which is another cause of mitriasis moving on to the third that is the third nerve paralysis if there is a paralysis of the third cranial nerve that is the ocular motor nerve it is again one of it can be one of the causes for mitriasis fourth it is the belladonna poisoning next is the internal ophthalmoplegia so internal ophthalmoplegia it is a condition it is a disorder of the conjugate lateral gaze so the person is going to have a conjugate lateral gaze in which the affected eye shows impairment of adduction so one eye is going to have a normal gaze whereas the impaired eye is going to is not having it's having an impairment in the adduction process so where the person is going to have a lateral gaze so this phenomena of internal of thalmoplegia it's one of the cause for mitriasis moving on to the next important cause of mitriasis that is the retinal detachment and moving on to the next that is the in, in conditions of acute congestive glaucoma where the vertically oval and large immobile pupil is there so this is the condition 
where mitre acids can be seen and last but not the least there are certain drugs and chemicals which what are responsible for mitre acids and these two drugs they can be broadly subdivided as that the effect of the topical parasympatho lytic drugs so it is the parasympatho lytic drugs what are responsible for the process of mitriasis such as the atropine the homatropine the tropicamide and the cyclopentolate whereas the effect of certain the sympathomimetic drugs since mitriasis it is a sympathetic it resembles a sympathetic activity so there are effect of certain topical sympathomimetic drugs they also cause mitriasis such as the adrenaline and the phenylephrine so students this was a very short video where i tried my level best to summarize in short and to explain as to what is the process of meiosis and mitriasis the causes i have enumerated over here if you still have any queries or comments you are most welcome to comment me in the comment section and viewers who are new to my channel and they haven't subscribed yet go do subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can be further updated for my upcoming videos thank you for watching